Welcome on over to Automotive World, everyone. I'm your host, Finney Mystery, and tonight we have some huge news coming out of one of my favorite vehicles, the Nissan Frontier for 2025. We have a little bit of a redesign, nothing really crazy, but we have a new fresh design. We do have some increase in enhanced capabilities. Let's get right into this because we've got a lot of good stuff here. We can see here we do have a new design. We're going to go through some of these photos here in a second. But we can kind of see the new design that's right up here. And I do apologize about it raining right there. But we do have some brand new capability. We have a larger towing capacity. We finally have a telescoping steering wheel, which is really, really nice. I don't know why it didn't come out when this was redesigned. We have a larger, in, a larger infotainment screen. We have more standard uh, safety tech. And we have now the ability for long bed configuration. So... We can see part of that redesign here. We can see the new wheels here. We can kind of see the you know little inserts here. You know the way the grill has been redone. I think it looks honestly. I think the previous one looked really really nice, and I think this one looks just as nice honestly. I really really like the design. We can now see down here with the new updated technology they talk about greater availability. The useful six foot bed. That is a really really big thing really huge now we don't have any pricing on this vehicle we do know that the pro x and the pro 4x trims are still staying those trims aren't going anywhere in terms of the grades we also do have our sv and sl grades as well so those are not going anywhere either the sv grades are now going to give us a 12.3 inch touch screen infotainment system so that is previous than the larger one the last one that is going to give us wireless android auto and apple carplay that is going to be really, really nice there. All Frontier grades now come with the standard sliding rear window, which is really, really nice. Sunglass holder and the overhead console. Nice to have that as well. Uh, it's usually not something that you always highlight too much in the press release, though. On the SL grades now, there is a wireless phone charger available. And we do have the intelligent all-around view monitor, which is really, really nice. And the four-way passenger uh, seat is also going to become standard and we get those new 17 inch alloy wheels which honestly i really like them i think they're really really good they look still really refined while being you know an old school kind of steely kind of wheel look i really really like it i think it looks really really well for the pro x and the pro 4x and those sv trims they're going to have the higher six-way power driver seat that's going to be really really nice there and now it does add two-way power lumbar which is also really, really nice. And the passenger seats still do keep that four-way power seat, and that's going to become standard on Pro X and Pro 4X trims. Um, and SL grades and SV grades will also have those you know, options on there. In terms of the flexibility, this is where it gets really, really nice. We talk about now the long wheelbase crew cab, six-foot bed. So Nissan listened to a bunch of us. They know that... There are people who want a crew cab who needed a larger bed. They did not have enough space. So the new Frontier will be available in the six foot bed. And they talk about that right here. Crew cab, long wheelbase configuration from SV to SV and Pro 4X and SL. So this is gonna be really, really big. The six foot bed is coming back. This is especially at a time too when most mid-sized trucks are kind of downsizing essentially. We kind of see with the new Tundra, it's kind of like a one size fits all. So the fact that Nissan is bringing that back, really, really big thing. And we have the Frontier also increasing towing capacity. Now, when the Frontier first came out, there was a lot of channels that tested the truck. That truck looked extremely confident and there's been a lot of people who've actually been towing more than that recommended limit. Usually the highest trim you could tow with the Frontier currently is I think it's about 6,720 pounds around in that area. The Frontier is getting an increase now a total towing capacity of 7,150 pounds. Is that as much as other people in the competition? No, but that is a very, very respectable amount that has gone up and we can see here that is an increase of 500 pounds so that's a really really big thing and obviously that is going to be you know determined on what type of trim you get and the options you get obviously those ratings are going to you know they are going to be different depending on your specific unit so this is just a maximum tow rating this is not what every single trim is going to have 
but the fact that we now have a over 7,000 pound tow rating on the Frontier is really, really nice. And it still keeps the V6. That V6, it's really, really nice. It's got a lot of horsepower. It's not the most fuel efficient engine in the world, but it's got a lot of horsepower. It's been around for a while now. So it's pretty reliable and I like it. No, you know, no turbos or nothing naturally aspirated. It's just old school. I really, really like it. We've got all new safety features here. So even from the S grade and the SL, you know, we're gonna have lane departure warning. We've got blind spot. We've got rear cross traffic alert. We've got rear parking sensors. We've got high beam assist, intelligent cruise control. Um, and the SL is also now going to feature traffic sign recognition. Really, really nice to see that there. We have a little video playing, which we will go over these pictures when we can see the new interior. We can see that larger screen. It's, they did a really nice job with the screen. They didn't make it, you know, taller. They just made it a wider screen. It looks really, really nice. You know, I think there's still, they could have maybe done some things with the air conditioning kind of knobs and some of those knobs there. But I think it's, it's, it's a good refresh, you know. Definitely helps it age a little bit. Um, definitely maybe compared to the competition. Might still be looking a little bit on the dull side. I personally don't mind it. I think it looks nice, but might be still kind of you know like i said just some of those knobs there still might be showing a little bit of age and we come down to the powertrain so as i talk about we keep that 3.8 liter v6 that vq engine the same nine speed same transmission it's only one there is no manual uh, we've got a 310 horsepower 281 pound feet of torque so this is you know this is a high output engine like I said, this is not the most fuel efficient engine in the world, but it's a really, really nice engine. Uh, we do have some features here. So we do have start stop technology. I'm not a big fan of start stop technology in my car. Some people really love it though. We do have the active brake limited slip diff and that's gonna be standard on all the grades. And then Pro 4X, you're gonna get that upgrade to the, the electronic locking rear diff. Um, and obviously with Pro X and Pro 4X, you know, these are off-road trims. So you get the Bilstein shocks. You know, you're going to get that electronic diff. You're going to get, you know, your LED lights are going to be standard. Fender premium audio system, you can get that 10 speakers. Obviously, you're going to get the bed liner. You're going to get the utility track. You're going to get the 120 volt power outlet. So obviously, you know, with the with the off-road trim, it is geared towards obviously that off-road consumer. And that's what we see here. You know, so you've got the red stitching on there, um, usually on the most expensive trim as well. Instead of having those cloth seats, you can get the leather seats. Some people really like the cloth seats though. I haven't had the chance to try either of them, but some people really, really love them. Overall though, like I said, I think I think it looks great. Um, I would have liked, if there's anything I would have liked to have seen, I think obviously people would have liked to have seen a manual transmission. That, were, that really wasn't gonna ever come though. So I'm not really too mad about that. I would have liked to seen another engine I like the V6. I would personally buy the V6, but I think there should be another option on there. But I think overall, Nissan has done a great job. This truck has done really well for them. I just do think, though, there are some buttons on there, especially down here in the lower panel. Definitely needs to do some updating because it's it's kind of still showing a little bit of age. Um, but I mean, we've got pictures here, and we're gonna go right through them. I mean, it, like I said, this, it looks really, really nice. I mean, when the redesign came out for this truck, it looked really, really nice, you know, building off of the Titan, you know, the Gladiator concept, that Warrior concept. So, I mean, it, we look at the back here. I mean, I think it's, you know, really, really nice here. The wheels look really, really good. The side profile, it's still got a really nice stance. You know, it still looks still looks pretty similar to the old one. Obviously, we can tell, you know, the grill has been redone. You know, we have our, you know, the inserts at the top there that it has been redone. Like I said, I really like these wheels. I think the wheels look really, really nice. Still a really good stance, really good looking vehicle overall. And I will say, honestly, I think the midsize trucks always look well, just because of the dimensions of the truck, because it's just the physical body of the truck. Um, I just I, I tend to find those designs tend to be a lot more forgiving and I think this truck still looks just as good as it did before you know we've got the LED headlights and things would have been interesting maybe if they go under projector headlights I know Nissan likes to use the reflector headlights but might have been nice if they went to projector headlights but looks really really nice overall Obviously on this one here, they don't have the tow hitch on there. Obviously it is, you know, you can get the tow hitch, but they don't have it on this specific one. 
We can see Utilitrack there. We can see the bed liner there. It looks really, really nice. We can see our interior here. I don't mind how they spell out Frontier like that. A lot of manufacturers do that. Even Tacoma does it. Um, I obviously I know this is showing off the Pro 4X trim, so obviously it's got the orange, you know, contrast. I don't mind it. I just don't know if it's the color or the font, but something about that. Or maybe it's just because it's all black and other than down here in the stitching and all that. I don't know. So I, I like it. I don't mind them doing it. I think they should keep doing it, but I don't know. Something about why how that says Frontier just doesn't really, I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't sit the greatest but we can see the new screen there it's a wide screen so it's really really nice um, but like I said you know looking down here like looking at you know we've got our selector here for our you know four high four low two high we've got our AC knobs down here we've you know we've got a bunch of other knobs down here you know for like ventilated you know seats things like that uh, I think the buttons up here on the infotainment system these are fine these look modern enough um, but these buttons down here, like especially like these old school buttons where you push down like that, like that really, it needs to get updated. Um, I know too with the Frontier, one of the biggest things is the window controls as well. And look, I mean, right on cue it shows it. I mean, that window switch looks like, like honestly, I think the window switch in my dad's 2003 Mazda Tribute probably looks a little bit more modern than that. Um, there definitely are some I really like this truck don't get me wrong uh, and I've said it before but and the redesign is really really nice I think they've done a great job but there's definitely some places uh, with little things too like some of these switches that you know we can see kind of down here this isn't too bad but really down here like this is like that heated seat switch like that's got to change I'm sorry that is just They've definitely got to do a few things on here that just bring it more modern. Like I said, with the font, I don't mind them spelling it out like this. I don't think it looks bad, but something about it to me just, I don't know, it just doesn't necessarily look right. I do think, though, it's nice that, you know, we they did give us a USB-A port. So if you do have an older school USB device, you can use USB-A and USB-C as well. I like that. But definitely, like I said, the window controls, like these buttons, you know, are, you know, our selector here for four high, four low, two high, um, and you know like our parking, you know our parking sensor button, our heated seats button, the window, you know switch, like that just kind of that's one of those things where it's like it just makes like they've done such a nice job updating it, and then they skip out on things like that, and then it just makes the vehicle kind of like it's just like oh, you know kind of still show a little bit of the age. I, I don't know why Nissan is, I don't know why. I don't know why they're doing that. I know they've got enough, you know, they can find another switch to use. And like I said, Nissan, that's, it's little things. It's not even like, you know, most manufacturers, like when we look at things, it's usually big things that go wrong, especially nowadays. But it's like with Nissan, the truck is a good value. It's got a great engine. It'd be nice if they had another option. It looks great. Uh, it's got great capability. But then we're complaining just about little things, about like window switches, heated sweet, you know, heated seat switches, and things like that. You know, I mean, we look over back at the steering wheel here. I like the steering wheel. Thank God we finally have a telescoping steering wheel, uh, which is really, really nice. I don't understand why that didn't come on the new generation, but it's nice to have it. And you know, like I said, it's like we see that that heated seat button right there like it just looks so old look at our window switches right here they're dull there's not no real markings on there there's no you know illumination or anything on there like that just looks like they just found the cheapest piece of plastic and kind of put it in there and it really sucks because this is a really really nice truck like they sell a ton of them it's really nice we can see that new widescreen how big it is using apple carplay it looks very nice and vibrant and the graphics look good we can see how the map looks on there. It's really, really nice. And I think that's kind of ultimately what kind of happened. I think that's ultimately how we sum this up. This truck looks really, really nice. And I would get this truck. I like this truck. But Nissan, there's just a few things, very little things, minute things that I think you guys need to change. And once you do, I think you'll be, you know, this vehicle will be better off for the long term because it just kind of feels like you're almost there, 
but then there's just little parts in the vehicle where it kind of like it's prominent and it reminds you this vehicle kind of feels just you know even though it's new and it feels nice and it feels modern it feels a little bit dated it doesn't feel like it's gonna be modern for very long and i think in an age now where we're in techno with technology we don't want to buy we know it's gonna we know something's gonna be outdated that's not the issue but we want to make sure we can have the most up-to-date item for as long as we can and i think there's just that little hesitation there so i think once nissan does that um, and maybe they introduce another engine option please keep the v6 but add something else because there's a lot of people who like this truck and need it but they don't need the v6 they want more fuel economy but keep the v6 around other than that though i guess i think nissan's done a really really nice job we don't have any pricing unfortunately nissan did say that that pricing will come later on closer to the on sale date of this specific model when it reaches uh, dealerships later this summer um, so we don't have any pricing right now I would expect, obviously, with what's going on with the bigger screen and things, pricing probably will go up. And we have seen this truck from when it initially launched creep up in pricing a bit. Uh, I have seen, though, you are able to get a lot of good deals with dealers on this truck. You are able to negotiate on this truck quite a lot. Um, but I would, su I would suspect that the pricing probably is going to go up a little bit on this. But we'll have to wait for that and see. That is going to do it for now, though, everyone. Let me know what you guys and girls think now below of this. If you have a current Frontier, is this going to be you ready to upgrade? Do you think this is worth it? Let me know what you guys and girls think down below. That's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone.